to get back in our Father's Word. We're going to continue where we left off yesterday, uh, revisiting women of the Bible. This is a topic that we need to cover occasionally because kind of really uh, sometimes women get a bad rap. And I, I want to start with the college professor here. Her name was Hulda. And uh, let's take the state of Israel at this time. And kind of like as we are today, when the ten tribes went captive by the Assyrian over the Caucasus Mountains, later being called Caucasian, settling Europe, many of them later moving to the Americas, and you have that house, much as it was at this time, it had, had a bad king. And everything fell, the, the Supreme Court threw prayer out of school and a bunch of other things. And, and um, the atheists tried to take over and, and uh, something had to be done. So God did it. Uh, he's going to do it again. So uh, who played a part in this? Uh, Josiah he started his kingship at eight years old, okay, eight years old. But his mother, Jediah, no doubt had a great deal to do with his reign. And even at eight years old, he started cleaning house, okay, getting things ship shape. So we're going to pick it up here, if we may, with, um, with uh, Josiah's reign here. And let's, let's pick it up, if we may, with the 8th verse of chapter 22, the great book of 2 Kings, and it reads, And Hilkiah the high priest, supposed to be, and Shaphan the scribe, um, he said unto Shaphan the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. They finally found the Bible. Okay. Can you imagine that? The high priest finally getting his hands on it. And uh, Hilkiah gave the uh, book to Shephan, and he read it. Well, that's interesting. Reading it doesn't cut it, though, does it? you got to read it with understanding. Verse 9. And Shephan, the scribe, came to the king and brought the king word again, and said, Thy servants have uh, gathered the money that was found in the house. He had him to go count it, okay? and have delivered it into the hand of them that do the work, that have the oversight of the house of the Lord, and fixing her up. Verse 10, And Shaphan the scribe showed the king, saying, Hilkiah the priest hath delivered me a book. And Shaphan read it before the king. Verse 11, And it came to pass, when the king had heard the words of the book of the law, that he rent his clothes. Verse 12, And the king commanded Hilkiah the priest and, and uh, Ahiah, Ahiakam the son of Shophan and Achbor the son of Micaiah and Shaphan the scribe and Ahiah the a servant of the king saying, 13, Go ye and inquire of the Lord for me. I mean, we're talking to the head priest, the scribe, and the, the king. Go inquire of the Lord for me and for the people and for all Judah concerning the words of this book that is found. For great is the wrath of the Lord that is kindled against us because our fathers have not hearkened unto the words of this book to do according unto all that which is written concerning us. Now, what happens when, when um, a nation drifts so far away from God that you don't have anybody, scarcely, hardly left, that can even read the Word with understanding? Okay. So who are they going to turn to? They have to turn to somebody that God has blessed. They have to turn to someone that God has chosen. And, well, do, do you think it could be a woman? Well, it's, if God chose a woman, it will be a woman. Okay. Verse 14. So Hilkiah the priest and Ahiakim and Akbor and Shophan and Asahiah went unto Hulda, the prophetess, the wife of Shalom, the son of Tikva, the son of Harhaz, Keeper of the wardrobe, that's who the old boy's job was, keeping the wardrobe, 
Now, she dwelt in Jerusalem in the college. Okay. She, she is the head mistress of the college, head professor. Okay. And they communed with her. <clears throat> they said, we're going to go down to the college and talk to whoever is in charge. And naturally, it was Hulda. Hulda's name, now why they ever named her Hulda, I will never know. Because, but then it could be because of the intelligence of the weasel, because Hulda means weasel. And uh, they're a very intelligent, sharp uh, little critter. And um, I'm sure that she was very intelligent and very sharp. But most of all, she was a prophetess. A prophetess means one that communes with God, but understands the word of God to the point that they can teach what the prophets taught and with a clear, simplistic understanding of the book of the law, which is to say the Torah, which is to say God's word. And within doing that, bringing forth what is written. So you can never take it away. You know, men sometimes, I mean, you know, some reverends just revolve when, when you bring these parts of the word out, you know, because... You know, man must always um, override the woman. Uh, yes, that's what they said. Well, God doesn't feel that way. Okay, God chooses whomever He will, and in this case, He chose this um, woman, and um, it, it is Holda that they went to, and it is Holda that they will commune with and listen to. Let's see what she's got to say. Fifteen, and she said unto them. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Tell the man that sent you to me. Happened to be, you know, 16. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring evil upon this place and upon the inhabitants thereof, even all the words of the book which the king of Judah hath read. It's going to come to pass. You know, there is such a thing as repentance, and uh, I would say it was time for a lot of repenting. Josiah will do it, okay? 17, because they have forsaken me. They put prayer out of schools. They, they, they won't let parents teach their own children the, the truth whereby they can pray to God anytime they need him. <clears throat> and have burned incense unto other gods, other religions, that they might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. Therefore my wrath shall kindle against this place and shall not be quenched. You got to know and understand our father's jealous. And w when you start playing church, when you start, when you begin hiding truth from God's children, it angers him. But brother, you don't understand. We live in an, an age of that that is politically correct. Okay. That's not Christian. All Christians, what you know what we go by? We go by what's morally correct. And you know something else? If somebody doesn't like it, guess what? They can shove off. Okay. We don't need them. And we don't care whether it offends them or not. We could not give two hoots. If, if they want to believe something else and have the wrath of God on their head, hey, go start your own belief and let him shave you down, okay? Or you could be intelligent and know from where all blessings flow, and this woman has given it to you straight. And whether a person likes to listen to a woman or not, hold us giving God's word. Verse 18, <clears throat> but the king of Judah, which uh, sent you to inquire of the Lord, thus shall you say to him, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, as touching the words which thou hast heard. This, this is the words from this book. It's God's word. Okay. 19. Because thine heart was tender. God is always fair. Listen to it. And thou hast humbled thyself before the Lord when thou heardest what I spake against this place and against the inhabitants thereof, that they should become a desolation and a curse. 
and hast rent thy clothes and wept before me, I also have heard thee, saith the Lord. God, again, God loves his children. This little boy at eight years old and his mama leading him and helping him rule, trying to straighten out all the crooks and the sins and, and things that were taking place, which God's Word is supposed to do, but the Word was removed from it. I mean, it was locked away in the temple, and nobody was using it. Surely no one would ever do that today, like maybe just use the family Bible to keep records of birth and death, and other than that, it gets a little dusty. I hope not in your family, because you need the Father. You need His blessings. Okay? And most of all, you need to have understanding or the wickedness of the world will take you over. Even if you claim to be a free nation, if you stand back and do nothing and leave God's word idle without reacting upon it, then you will get what you deserve. All right. Verse 20, Behold, therefore I will gather thee unto thy fathers, and thou shalt be gathered unto thy grave in peace, and thine eyes shall not see all the evil which I will bring upon this place. And they brought the king word again. Here, this lady, this prophetess. Now, many people I know, I, I know, you've, you'll say, well, I, I didn't know there was a woman prophet. There were lots of them. Lots of women prophets. Do you know one place where you can read of women prophetess? Right before your very eyes in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, where Paul says, If a woman prays or prophesies in church, well, I thought a woman was supposed to be silent. If you're a real Greek scholar, you know it says a woman shouldn't chatter in church. Nobody should. Women get a bad rap, but not with our father because our Father is very fair. And then Paul continues on down to the 10th verse of that 11th chapter and says why a woman should always have Christ over her head. She should be under Christ. Why? Because of the fallen angel, because of the angels. Why? They're coming back. As it is written in Matthew 24, it's going to be just like it was in the days of Noah. They're going to be giving and taking in marriage again because the fallen angels love women. And this is why Paul says in that 10th verse, you have better keep Christ over your head because of the angels. And, and so it is. And, but um, it very clearly states in the New Testament that women were prophetess. And um, that means, in a sense, teaching the prophets and teaching. Meaning teaching what the prophets have written. Plus God uses them and leads them and guides them. So... How fantastic it is to know that our Father. Now, you talk about a woman, a lady that really gets a bad rap. Turn with me to the great book of Joshua. Joshua chapter 2. Okay. And uh, a lady that sure gets a bad rap. And, and, and I'm going to document that it's only what people say as it is repeated in God's Word. Chapter 2, verse 1, and this concerns old Joshua. And Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out of Chittim two men to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land, even Jericho. And they went and they came into the harlot's house, named Rahab, and lodged there. Now, why, why did they call her a harlot? Because she was one of the best businesswomen with flax products. You know, there weren't hotels in that day, and naturally, in, in, in her business, she had lodging for people. But I, I will document that what I'm saying is true before this, this is finished. But other businessmen and good reverends in the community like to start stories. And uh, this woman basically, as in Matthew, you'll see, was in the genealogy of Joseph and even the son. Okay. God doesn't deal in that. Okay. Verse 2. In other words, other businessmen were lying about her. Women get a bad rap. And so it is. 
And it was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, there came men in hither tonight of the children of Israel to search out our country. The country. Three. And the king of Jericho sent unto Rahab, saying, Bring forth the men that are come to thee, which are entered into thine house, for they be come to search out all the country. You got some spies there with you, little lady. Verse 4. And the woman took the two men and hid them and said thus, There came men unto me, but I wist not whence they were. I have no idea where they went. Where did she hide them? That's, that's your answer, and it's very important. Where did she hide the two men? Verse 5, And it came to pass about the time of shutting of the gate, when it was dark, that the men went out whether the men went I would not I don't know where they went pursue after them quickly for you shall overtake them they went right over there you head out go get them she's getting rid of them in other words very wise woman verse 6 but she had brought them up to the roof of the house and hid them with the stalks of flax which she had laid in order upon the roof what does that mean what was she doing with all that flax upon her roof, made in, laid in order for drying and curing, because she made fine linen from it to sell? Okay, She was a merchant. Well, uh, you mean there was enough up there to hide two men? A, a dozen, probably. Because that was her business. It certainly was not harlotry. Um, you might say, well, how, how do you know that? Well, a harlot doesn't have that much flax on her roof, okay? You can count on it. Um, she has other things on her roof. Uh, and, and so it is. So that, there's your proof. And the men pursued after them the way to Jordan unto the fords. And as soon as they were, which pursued after them were gone out, they shut the gate. The two men are still up there. And before they were laid down, she came up unto them upon the roof, and she said unto the, to the men, I know that the Lord hath given you the land, and that your terror is fallen upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. They're afraid of you. Verse 10. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you. You walked right across on dry land. When you came out of Egypt and what you did unto the two kings of the Amorites and were on the other side of Jordan, Sihon and Og, the old giant, uh, whom you utterly destroyed. Those warrior kings. You love it. And as soon as we had heard these things, our hearts did melt. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and in the earth beneath. She begins to show who she truly is. Okay. Verse 12. Now, therefore, I pray you, swear unto me by the Lord, since I have showed you kindness, that ye will also show kindness unto my father's house and give me a true token. Th this is important because it has one of the marks of the house of Ulster, okay, which is very important. Verse 13, And that ye will save alive my father and my mother and my brethren and my sisters and all that they have and deliver our lives from death. In other words, we have a type of Savior here. I want you to save us. 14, And the men answered her, Our life for yours, if you utter not this our business, and it shall be. When the Lord hath given us the land, that we will deal kindly and truly with thee. You can count on it. We'll make that deal, our life for yours, as long as you don't uh, tell where we are. 15, then she let them down by a cord through the window, or had a quarters by the wall, 
for her house was upon the town wall, and she dwelt upon the wall. 16, and she said unto them, Get you to the mountain, lest the pursuers meet you, and hide yourselves there three days. Isn't that interesting? Until the pursuers be returned, and afterward may ye you go your way. 17, and the men said unto her, We will be blameless of this thine oath, which thou hast made us swear. 18, behold, when we come unto the land, and thou shalt bind this line of scarlet thread, this is important, don't ever forget it, the scarlet thread in the window which thou didst let us down by, and thou shalt bring thy father, thy mother, and thy brethren, and all thy father's household here unto thee, and, and you'll be, be safe here. This is, this is what starts the, the very beginning of the red-handed people okay, uh, of the house of Ulster. The, when you see that red hand in the um, genealogy charts, it's what we're talking about, this people. And you can understand why she was in the lineage of Christ. Don't, don't ever, when some, when some group says this person is a harlot, do you accept that as fact? Or do you investigate? Do you mark it, or I'll use the Greek word scope it? Do you put the microscope to it in your mind? You know, you, you want to be careful what people call people, especially if it's a good person and their works do not um, show um, what uh, they are accused of, which in this case, it's obvious, you know, only a fool would think that this woman was truly a harlot. But if you know men, other businessmen, I mean, she put them to shame. And do you think there's something unusual about a lady that's really got a lot on the ball and makes it to the top? What do you think is said around the office about how she got there? Anything new under the sun? Of course not. It's despicable. It's, it is regretful that men do not realize that God uses whomever he chooses. And so it is even to this day that uh, there was Philip in the New Testament. Philip had four virgin daughters. They'd never been with a man. Do you know what the four of them were? They were prophetess. They were all teachers of the word of God in the land of the Gaza Strip and right up where there's much trouble today, which was never conquered by Israel. They taught up and down that area back when man was afraid to go there, basically. Four prophetess. And what are you going to say about that? And again, as it is written in God's great word, the great book of Joel in the Minor Prophets, when he says, I will bring that northern army down, I will control them, but my sons and my daughters will stand against them. And when we're delivered up in the end times, do you think God cares about gender when he says, I deliver up mine election? Because there very possibly could be more women elect than men, quite frankly. Because more women work in God's church than men do. I'm talking about sincere workers that produce. Even Paul himself makes note of that as we find, and we'll go there. Let's go to Romans in the New Testament. When Paul is signing off, he would all, Paul always was very honest. He gave credit where credit was due. And... Um, Romans chapter 16, okay, uh, and, and here we have Paul, he's, uh, he's giving a salutation here, and if, if I remember right, there's about 10 women in this column, and they have to be respected, okay, but uh, kind of, who does God use the most? Well, let's listen, chapter 16, the great book of Romans, verse 1. I commend unto you Phoebe, our sister, which is a servant of the church, which is, which is at Sincretia. 
um, uh, so um, Sinkia, Kira, what are you going to do? She was, uh, the, the word uh, Phoebe means bright and pure. Okay. Verse 2, that you receive her in the Lord as becometh saints. He's calling her a saint. And that ye assist her in whatsoever business she hath need of you, for she hath been a secure of many and of myself also. That's quite a reputation. I mean, really right downtown, okay? I mean, she was a, uh, she ruled at the hand of God, and Paul knows it. And Paul's giving her credit. He said, I mean, she is, she is as a saint. That means a set-aside one, okay? That's what the word means in the Greek. He said, she's, Phoebe is a set-aside one. You treat her accordingly and give her that respect. It's too bad that that doesn't happen always. But then it is just natural that in this wicked world, a lot of people do not get the respect, perhaps, that they deserve. And that's fine. But... It is not good when one's own turns against them. That is to say, the male population without appreciating the, the, um, the women of God's Word that have accomplished ever so much. You know what this third verse says? Let's read it. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ Jesus. Why? You know, I mean, Priscilla is the woman and Aquila is the man. You always name the man first and then the woman. Uh, unless the woman is the head preacher. You want me to say that again? You always name the man first in, instead of the woman unless the woman is the head preacher. So naturally, Paul was very fond of Priscilla. He even calls her a pet name in one of the books of the great Bible, calling her Prisca, <clears throat> because she, she could get it done. And only the one, there's only about one place, and I kind of doubt it, that Aquila is mentioned first, and after that, always it's Priscilla first. Why? Because she was the best teacher. Okay. Teacher of God's Word, that's what it's all about is conveying the word of God. <clears throat> Let's read the fourth verse. Uh, Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ, who have for my life laid down their own necks. They laid their lives down for me if, if it was necessary. When you open your neck, you've got it right down to where the rubber meets the road. Got it? <clears throat> Unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. I mean, they were so very popular and so very efficient in serving the living God. And Prisca was right in there. I mean, she could take the word and lay it down as it should be taught, straight and level. And Paul respected that and, um, and, and um, gave her credit where credit was well due. Verse 5, Likewise greet the church that is in their house. Got that? I mean, they had a church right in their own home. Salute my well-beloved Epinetus, who is the first fruits of Achaia unto Christ. Greet Mary, another woman, who bestowed much labor on us. Um, uh, and so it is, and so it was. Verse 7, Salute Andronius, because and Junia, Junia was another, probably, and my kin, uh, a kinsman, okay, and my fellow prisoners, who are of note among the apostles, who also also were in Christ before me. So Paul is giving credentials here to women, and yet at the same time, most people would say Paul was against women. What does that show? It shows their lack of understanding. God's Word. But, you know, a man that is so weak in thinking his own abilities uh, must be protected at all costs. 
rather than receiving truth from God's word. And dignity where dignity is deserved, and knowledge where knowledge is deserved, credit where credit is deserved, is part of serving the living God. And knowing the women, from Eve all the way down to Mary, that brought forth the Christ child, umbilical cord to umbilical cord. God protecting that line and bringing forth the Savior of saviors. And even after the crucifixion, as we read in this 16th chapter, there would be many other women in this, in this chapter, in this salutation, that were great servants of the church and teachers of the church. I, I know that upsets some, but it shows if you do not understand the Greek well enough to separate the word chatter from being silent, you're in a heap of hurt because it will throw you off. It takes a pretty good Greek scholar to catch it, but you need to do your homework, put the scope to it. I mean, and give credit where credit's due and God will bless you for it. Because don't you ever think for a moment God doesn't love his daughters. And he refers to them many times over and over and over. And God will use them in these end times just as well as he uses men's, young and old. So you might as well get used to it. okay? Because it always has been. There's nothing new under the sun. That that has been shall be again. You want to keep your eyes open, especially in this time. For God will pick a leader, and whomever he chooses to use, God will use. And you will know it, okay? because they will have the gift of the living Lord, those that serve him. It's due. Get ready for it. All right, bless your hearts. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed bringing it. Bless your hearts. You listen a moment, won't you please?